And now Lars Bertling is going to come up. Game Workers Unite. Hello, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Happy May Day! Happy May Day! May Day! Yeah. Um, my name is Lars. I work with Game Workers Union organization dedicated to promoting unionization in the video games industry. I know that not all of you play video games. I know that not all of you are familiar with the industry, but uh, I want to talk a little bit about it. And I think some of you may see some parallels uh, with some other stuff that you might have some um, familiarity with. Um, over the course of this COVID pandemic, a lot of people have been stuck at home and a lot of people have lost their jobs or have been laid off and are waiting for uh, compensation. Some people never got their checks in the mail. That's just how it is. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people have been doing over the course of pandemic is minding their businesses home uh, and playing video games and the like. Now tell me if you've heard of a story um, similar to this before. Uh, we have a lot of folks uh, in the industry, we call them the bosses, uh, and they make most of the money. We see record profits in the video games industry because everybody is buying video games because everybody is stuck at home. And everybody is buying these things, record profits, everybody is super excited. This is Activision, this is whoever's biggest year on record. And then suddenly, everybody gets laid off. Why? Why is everybody getting laid off if you're making record profits over the course of a human disaster? Doesn't make any sense. Literally, not just in the game industry, everybody for years and years now, I'm one of the youngest people here, I'm 24, so I've seen the gradual decline of things even further than uh, where they were a couple decades ago. It is a nightmare. People cannot afford well-paying jobs. People are told to be, to feel lucky, to feel like they are blessed for having slave wages. No, fuck no. You deserve a well-paying job. You deserve workers' rights on the job. You deserve safety on the job. And these people don't want to believe it, but it's true. And we all need to stand up and fight for it. And I also want to say on the topic, um, Sharon and many other people have brought this up, we need direct action related to these things. We cannot just get angry and stand up when somebody gets hurt, gets killed, loses their life savings. This needs to be an ongoing thing. We cannot just stand up and just show solidarity with somebody, say, oh, I'm so sorry so-and-so got murdered. Don't worry, this person got convicted, probably won't happen again. We all know that's bullshit. We all know it's bullshit. This system, this policing system, this capitalist system, I will say capitalism because that's what it is, and that is the driving force of so much pain and devastation in this country. And that's why we're all here today. We need to stand up against this brutal system and say no more. No more. No more. No more. And finally, finally, it is great that we all recognize the intricacies and the devastation that capitalism has wrought. So many of us notice now that capitalism is crumbling. It is a broken system. It cannot sustain us. Awesome. It cannot sustain us, but we must go further. We must go further than to say that capitalism is a problem. We must go further and say we must build an alternative to capitalism. We must build socialism. We must build socialism, not just because it is the hot new thing to do with the kids or whatever. We need socialism. We need an economy that is not ruled by so-called whatever the market wants. We built the market. It was the people who built capitalism and we will build socialism in turn. Thank you all so much.
much for being here. Let's all continue to stand up and fight and happy May Day. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Lars is with the Socialist Unity Party. We're coming to the end of the program, but I need you guys to sit tight because we have some special messages.